Our approach to transition at Jubilee Park Primary School has evolved over the last five years. We've moved away from the more traditional approach of a, a formal moving up day, both within our school and with our year six moving to year seven. And through our work as a cluster within our Bayslag cluster, we have established a more um, thorough process, I would say, in terms of understanding each child as a child themselves and making sure that children are at the heart of our transition process. So what does this look like within our school? It looks like um, year six teachers getting the opportunity to meet with year seven teachers and talk about each individual child. We've moved away from the passing up of levels and children being seen as numbers to actually being able to talk about the children, talk about their personalities, their barriers to learning, what makes them thrive within a learning situation, moving beyond your traditional looking at English and maths, but also considering children's wellbeing and any additional learning needs they may have. In terms of what the, that looks like across our cluster, the same pattern has followed and I think that has been a real strength with our cluster and then that means that the Bayside School, when they're receiving our children, have a thorough understanding of the children before they even start in September. As part of Curriculum for Wales being that learning continuum for 3 to 16, it's been vitally important that as a cluster we've established routines for developing our curriculum. We've been very privileged within our cluster that we've been able to work very closely together both as head teachers and with curriculum leaders and have developed a series of professional learning and development opportunities over the last three years. What this has enabled us to do is to really understand each other first and foremost. What makes us tick? What drives us within our individual schools? I've been involved in the approach to transition that we've developed as a cluster and as an individual school. It's been important that we've together as a cluster gained this oneness of purpose so that we've developed a story that talks about the child and the child's progress from transition right from nursery right through to the age of 16. In the past we've talked about transition being just between year six and seven predominantly however transition is about from one class to another class so that, that three to 16 continuum um, it, it is clear right through the phases and the progression steps as they will be in terms of um, the new curriculum so i've been involved in managing that change process having been ahead for over 20 years and involved in an accountability system that's focused on things that really haven't been useful for the learning and teaching dynamic so through our professional learning and development sessions, we've been able to develop that consistency, the coherence and the understanding of Curriculum for Wales, what it looks like in our own individual schools, but what it also means for us, particularly when our children get to year six and how we can ensure they have the necessary skills to move into year seven. All of our schools within the cluster use the full purpose matrices to ensure that our children have the necessary skills before they move to year seven. This allows then the year seven teachers to develop their curriculum from that point. They're not having to test our children when they arrive. They're not having to second guess what has been learned, but they're actually able to move that learning forward and crucially, move that learning forward towards the four purposes. As part of our cluster curriculum design, we've also spent a lot of time over the, this academic year looking at assessment and progression. We've established our assessment cycles within our individual schools, but also ensured that we have a focus on those principles of progression. The principles of progression that are identified in Curriculum for Wales are the backbone of our conversations. We ensure that across the cluster there is commonality within our cycles of assessment. Yes, we may do things slightly differently in terms of our individual school needs, but we all have made a commitment to ensure that our children have a very similar approach to assessment and progression. We also have a common report format in primary schools across the cluster for our annual learner review that goes home to parents at the end of the summer term. There are many steps to our transition process, um, feeding in from our assessment cycles at Jubilee Park. Um, so every half term we have um, our PLRs, Pupil Learning Reviews, where we are released as teachers for a day to go out and discuss um, learning with our children, uh, our, their barriers to learning. So we have a really good understanding of, of where they are, along with the other assessments that we do of, of learning within the classroom. Um, this then helps us feed into that transition process um, and have the collaboration with their next teacher and in my case as a year six teacher with the comprehensive schools that they will be going to. As part of our work on assessment and progression, we also have joint professional learning and development for our teachers. This has been really crucial for our teachers to have the opportunity to share books, to share planning, 
the only way that we can develop that coherence and pace in our understanding of assessment and progression, particularly now that we won't have outcomes and levels moving forward, is that our teachers need to have that opportunity to share, to talk about learning, to talk about what makes a difference in their classrooms and to develop that understanding across our cluster. Moving forward, we're going to be developing a cluster learner profile, which will identify what a good learner looks like at each of the progression steps. This is a huge journey, and this is something that will take a number of years to develop. Developing a cluster curriculum and developing transition arrangements in light of Curriculum for Wales is a challenge. First and foremost, I think it's been a challenge for us as head teachers, for us to put trust in each other and for us to also trust that what we're doing within our individual schools is right. We've had to stay true to ourselves and one of the ways we've really overcome this is by developing a cluster vision. We have a separate vision that encompasses many of our individual school vision principles but also brings together what we actually stand for as a cluster. Some of the other challenges have been time. We've had to put a lot of time and commitment into meeting, both as heads, meeting once a month for the last year to make sure that this curriculum development actually works, but also time for our staff. We've used grant funding to enable this to happen, and we've also enabled the use of, of things like our education improvement grant to support teachers to come out of class and to have time together. Time could be seen as a barrier, for, but for me it has been overwhelmingly successful and I believe you have to put that time and that trust into your profession to enable a cluster curriculum to develop. Transition within my own school is focused now primarily on the story of the child. We focus on the things that matter to children in terms of their progress. We want to make sure that what we talk about and what colleagues talk about both in my own school, within the cluster and between um, schools at different phases focuses on the child as a learner and the next steps that the children make so we don't talk about levels or outcomes or assessments as raw data any longer it's the story of the child the holistic child how is the child becoming a for purpose type child how are they making progression through the progression steps how are they with their learning and the experiences that they have how are they socially emotionally how is the well-being of a child developing we're no longer talking towards an accountability system that of arbitrary measures that most teachers in the profession over many years realise made very little difference to children. We're now talking about those steps in their learning, the next steps for that child. And therefore, we're able to tailor our approaches in terms of teaching and learning to maximise that child's, child's potential as they move through and become more of those four purpose type children. It's been liberating, it's been encouraging, and as the years go on, because the curriculum isn't done, it's only just beginning, um, should, should land us in a good place for the future. In terms of the pupils, I really think they benefit um, from having uh, knowledge of who their teachers are going to be, from um, having exposure to some of the other children, you know, meeting some of the year sevens who used to come to our school uh, was um, a real beneficial thing because, you know, they were able to see how they've settled in after their first year um, at secondary school. The impact on learners of the approach of what we call our challenge curriculum at Pentapoith has been that they are much more sustained in their involvement in learning. They are able to have a, 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 a view, a voice in what they learn. They're able to take part in, in, in themes and contexts and inquiry questions which perhaps they hadn't been able to do in a prescribed curriculum before. So in terms of them moving forward, the impact on their well-being, their sense of enjoyment, their attitudes towards learning in school has been you know, quite measurable within school. We're also already beginning to see sustained writing development, sustained questioning, sustained application of skills of literacy, numeracy and, and, and IT across the curriculum. A real positive impact, you know, and one that we hopefully will develop so that these children become independent learners to face the challenges that will uh, await them in, in their learning journey and in the modern world. The benefits to the pupils across our cluster, I would say, goes back to that understanding of coherence. We're able to say with our hands on our hearts within our cluster that all the children are having a similar diet, a similar diet in both learning and teaching, but also ensuring then that that learning is enabling our children to have a smooth transition as they move into year seven and continue in their learning journey.